Uh, Mr. Elbeck, nice to meet you so much. Uh, my name is Zane. I am part of marketing department at Bridge Management University. Mr. Timur has told a lot of good things about you and you're one of a kind, actually. I really appreciate you and being here and joining us via Zoom. And I think we have four more, uh, five participants joining us via Zoom. And we have lovely students and some more will be joining, uh, hopefully. And today um, we'll be talking, the topic, main topic is how to be successful at the university and beyond. And we'll be asking you questions and if you don't mind, you'll be sharing your life experience with us and the things and you would like to tell us. Thank you so much for being Absolutely. here. Mr. Yeah. Jones, you can get the uh, microphone and I'll check it this time. Alibek, it's nice to see you. Yes. Hope everything is well with you. Thanks for joining and sharing your um, experience, your wisdom and your knowledge with our students. Uh, well, uh, my first question uh, to you uh, would be, uh, what the what's the biggest challenge that you ever uh, tried to resolve and you were successful with? Um, yeah, thanks, uh, Timur. Uh, yeah, very nice to be uh, with you guys. Uh, yeah, please introduce uh, yourself first. Yeah, yeah, even though it's uh, uh, via Zoom online, but still, <clears throat> I think it's a great opportunity for me also to share my experience uh, with you guys. Um, if I would be a student, I would probably be um, happy to kind of have one of uh, sessions like this uh, when uh, someone is uh, sharing their uh, already uh, some some experience. That's why I'm uh, I, I was keen uh, to talk to you uh, to students of the university because uh, there's so many things uh, ahead of you. Uh, big journey, um, uh, a lot of opportunities are going to be uh, in front. So uh, if I would be uh, helpful uh, with any of the things that I say today, uh, I would be happy with that. So yeah. Um, yeah, my name is Alibek. Um, I studied at uh, Kazakh British Technical University, where uh, uh, Mr. Timur uh, was part of uh, as well. Um, I graduated um, back in 2010, so that is already 11 years since I uh, finished uh, studying. Um, I studied uh, computer science. Prior to university, I've had some exposure to informatics back in high school times. My older brother um, is a um, big achiever in, in that field. He took silver medal in the worldwide, uh, like in, in IOI, International Olympiad in Informatics. So he was always a big uh, star for me that I was always following. Uh, was a big inspiration and motivation for me. Uh, that's why I kind of started this um, direction in the computer science field. Um, yeah, um, to give you, before I answer your question, uh, Timur, uh, I would like to briefly talk about my career. So um, after I graduated, um, I actually I started working, I think when I was on my third year of university, uh, we were doing back then uh, kbtu.kz, the, basically the website of our university. Uh, while I was working in, at one of the local companies. So that was my first uh, kind of official job. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, early on the third year, I think I already started uh, being exposed to some kind of work. Um, and here would be my first advice. Try to start your career as early as possible with be it internships or some um, some, you know, uh, short term jobs, uh, whatever. Uh, but uh, try try to uh, try to be exposed to different things and uh, to find what you like the most what you're strong at. And then once you find that strength, try to build on top of it, uh, try to dig into it and become a master of that. So um, yeah, um, yeah, uh, after that, uh, I went uh, on, on my fourth year of university, I went into uh, a different job, um, working as a software developer, we were building 
um, blogging platform, which is called uh, why your, your vision uh, .kz. It's a blog blogging platform where you know everyone can do their blogs. Um, and um, I worked there for some time uh, until I finished the, uh, my fourth year. And then um, I took a little bit of break. I have a friend, uh, he was studying uh, uh, in Singapore at uh, Nanyang Technology University. Um, and I decided to, um, you know, um, take a break uh, from uh, work and, you know, just fly and do nothing and stay at his place in a dormitory and, you know, just do nothing for, uh, for a month. Um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, but then when I came back, uh, I was uh, offered to work at uh, one of the uh, startups uh, to, to that uh, was um, like we were building online uh, restaurants uh, reservation uh, system and uh, uh, cinema ticketing uh, systems. Mm -hmm. So I spent a couple of years there. Um, we, 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 we've built a strong team of developers who actually also graduated from my university. So back then, uh, unconsciously, I started uh, building uh, my networking skills. Um, which is very important, and I also recommend you to um, to pay attention to this. Uh, building networks is is is, is very important, um, and I think for Central Asian folks, it's kind of comes natural, also always, right, to you know uh, build relationships um, and try to utilize it somehow, leverage somehow. But if you do it in professional manner, that's the best thing you can do not not just leveraging because you know someone but actually tapping into someone's skill uh, in some, into someone's uh professional um uh um, professional uh strength uh then you'll get the best out of this so um yeah and i think you can start actually building your team uh even in university times uh, where where you find uh, like-minded people uh, and you can actually experiment a lot of things with a group of people who kind of like-minded and, you know, build a small community, do cool things, um, uh, go together somewhere. I don't know, you can do 3D printing together, whatever. Uh, but just if you have that uh, small community of people who are similar to you or have similar interests, similar preferences uh, in uh, certain things, uh, I think that can also spark uh, your kind of um, future path to something bigger because uh, it will come naturally as because you you, you like it uh, because you just like it uh, you, you can develop it very well mm -hmm. nice. um, fast forward uh, I, I I always had um, some um, entrepreneurial spirit inside myself I always wanted to try something you know, to start myself from scratch. Um, probably that's why I worked at a startup um, because we were, we were building things from ground up. Um, a friend of mine and myself, we launched a uh, um, small business for making uh, phone cases, uh, iPhone cases with customly printed uh, pictures. And um yeah we ordered some small uh tools from china and we were printing it in you know small room uh, on the back of the phone cases uh photos that uh, customers gave us we were making 10x uh, on each uh salt uh, phone case so like we would spend 510 gay for uh like uh, as, as you know yeah and we were selling it for 5000 it's just mind wow. blowing. is it still going on <laughs> Sorry, is it still going on? Is it still business operating? No, it's 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 not. Um, uh, I, I will tell you why. Um, so moving forward, we we thought, how can we scale this? Uh, and then we decided, like, let's try uh, doing something global, and maybe we can, like, if people uh, in local market wants to buy it, probably somewhere else in in this world, the other folks wants to buy it as well. There were actually some uh, services um, that did it um, in a more advanced way with, you know, uh, like uh, via their websites, you can upload your picture, do everything online. And then, customize that. 
exactly exactly you, you customize text or whatever you can move but we didn't have this technology uh, i was thinking to build it but i never built it so we decided to sell uh kind of pre-printed um phone cases and we found on alix uh, on ali uh, on alibaba some uh, suppliers who could uh, print uh, phone cases um kind of per one item when we, we just give them the photos and they would print it and send what, whatever we ask them to it's called ah. uh, drop shipping drop shipping uh, this kind of model uh so we were selling it on instagram i mean selling like we were driving traffic uh, to our website and on when when they when customers would land on on uh on the website uh uh we uh we would uh you know transact them and then just uh like daily we would send the requests uh, to our Chinese suppliers uh, and outsource all the, the printing part, all the shipping part. And we do only the marketing and, um, you know, the website maintenance. Uh, there were days when we were selling uh, for more than $1,000 uh, uh, in a day. Uh, wow, really? Yeah, yeah, uh, that was going quite well. Uh, until, we started. <laughs> until you started your study until <laughs> uh, yeah until we started uh, facing some scalability problems quality problems um, and when I say scalability I mean people scalability um, we were just two of us and we tried to do things ourselves oh. uh, a lot of them but uh, yeah the big mistake here is that we did not um, delegate uh, some of the uh, you know work um yeah looking back now like retrospectively um we we just needed to hire some assistant you know to reply to all emails or uh, hire one person to just for communications with chinese suppliers uh just to fill in that excel sheet and then send it over email but we didn't do it we did everything ourselves so we didn't scale ourselves mm -hmm. and that's why like it was a bottleneck and like everything all, all the work stream was coming through us um but uh yeah there was no one who could uh, tell us like do it this way don't do it this way or we didn't we were we were not smart enough to ask for advice from someone um so here a couple of learnings uh find a mentor uh, mm -hmm. or become a mentor yourself uh, in something that you know very well so by finding a mentor, you will get those quick learnings um, or efficient uh, learnings in a um, shorter way. So, for example, like that I, that I mentioned just now, if someone would told me, hey, just delegate this, like, don't do this, you know, you, you, you should focus on more strategic things, but hire someone else and like let them do it and pay, pay uh, some uh, amount of money for them, you will save a lot of time and you focus on other things. So yeah, uh, find yourself a mentor if you don't have one and uh, try to be a mentor yourself because uh, by sharing uh, knowledge, you will naturally uh, become a smarter person because you think about what you're saying because other people are receiving this information, they're learning uh, something from it. Uh, you will kind of consciously uh, uh, try to speak through your wisdom, you know, that you're passing over. And enabling other people is um, a blessing thing, we say. Yeah, Mr. Libby, there's a question. Of course. Uh -huh. Alibek, for students, it's very important to find uh, 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 such kind of mentor, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, what do you think? Uh, so... Uh, can students find uh, um, mentors uh, without uh, paying anything, or uh, which uh, they should pay for for that for their service? Well, uh, from my experience, uh, students don't have a lot of money <laughs> in most of the cases. So try to find. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, you, uh, you know, if if you know very well what you want to get the knowledge about uh uh i don't know uh probably you know like if, if you if you go and find some specialists who do like consulting kind of thing of course they will ask money for you uh from you but um in, in a lot of cases i think uh if the person you're reaching out uh to get some advice um you know is something that you wish to learn from uh if they're 
cool uh, people, they would do it for free. Um, I don't know, just reach out on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever. Uh, normally, people are kind of open for responding. Like, for example, um, I'm being reached out at least one or two times a week on, on Facebook, and I try to reply to everyone. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt asking. If they tell you that, hey, you should pay money for me, uh, then yeah, you, you take it from there. But uh, I don't think like practical advices, uh, kind of life uh, style, kind of, um, you know, questions. Yeah, they're usually not uh, priced, let's say. I don't know how to price it even, unless it's uh, some, you know, very like detailed, like to the point, some uh, commercial thing. Probably you, you'll get asked uh, uh, to pay for it. but I would try to find a mentor that is, you know, not paid because, you know, some things, uh, some, 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 some kind of knowledge, or like life experience sharing, uh, like your personal experience sharing, I don't know, like asking money for it uh, from students is, is, I don't think it's, it's good. <laughs> I personally think so. Thanks. If you would consult some company like on commercial terms, then of course it's a different thing. You're doing a business. You're spending your time. Uh, but if it's you know like knowledge sharing uh, for for someone that, who's learning, especially students, yeah, it should be for free. I assume. All right. Thank you so much for the for the great answer. I think it was like well grounded. And we have prepared a couple of questions for you. Can you tell us where you are right now? Where are you located? Because some of us like came pretty late. Oh, sure. And... Yeah, yeah. I I live in Netherlands, uh, near Amsterdam. Mm. I work at Booking.com uh, already. Like in, in in this winter is gonna be six months, six years. Um, yeah, I work as an engineering software engineering manager. Uh, which means that I have a team of uh, software developers, uh, different flavors like uh, backend engineers, frontend engineers, uh, iOS, Android, and I lead the team. Um, and yeah, we're building new features, uh, delivering new services. Um, and my job is to guide um, on the technical aspects uh, on a higher level, like the architecture of the system that we're building, uh, a lot of stakeholder management, a lot of uh, people management, performance management, uh, career development, this kind of things. Well, how is the weather like now? Is it <laughs> shiny or is it raining outside? Um, right now, it's okay. It's not bad, like <laughs> roughly 10, 15 <laughs> degrees. Um, All right, yeah. thank you so much. And the next question is, that I want to ask from you, I think uh, we have got some of the questions from our students. And the next question I want to ask you, can you describe or outline your typical day at your work? Typical day, mm, yeah, these days, uh, typical day is very much home-like in this uh, setup. Uh, I work in my living room. Um, I have two children, two daughters. Uh, they're in kindergarten right now, so they're not uh, bothering me. Otherwise, they would just run somewhere here and uh, <laughs> <laughs> distract me from working. Um, but uh, yeah, usually, so uh, actually my kind of day, I'm, I'm trying to change it uh, these days. I try to wake up super early and do my running in the early morning before, you know, family wakes up. But uh, yeah, usually the day starts around seven uh, or if I do running, it's like starts at six, uh, something like this. Um, then we take our children to kindergarten. Uh, my wife also works. Um, and then, yeah, we at, at work, the day starts with the stand ups. We what we called back in office times uh, when we worked uh, from office, not from home. Uh, the day would start from having a daily stand ups where everyone says what they did uh, yesterday uh, briefly and what they're planning to do today, what are what blockers do you have. Um, um, yeah, uh, since I'm a manager, uh, at least two or three hours I spend in meetings every day. Um, uh, yeah, uh, like catching up with some folks on one-on-one, -on -one, 
uh, or um, uh, having so, sort of alignment type of meetings so that we have the same vision with some other teams um, on, on, on certain aspects of the work. Um, what else? Yeah, I don't code myself for a couple of years already because um, I'm, I'm more hands off, let's say, and like work on the higher level, like uh, on the, you know, uh, uh, technical guidance directions. Um, yeah, back in the software developer days, uh, I was coding, yeah, like maybe 50% of my day, let's say. Um, yeah, uh, and usually the day starts, the, the working hours starts around 10 and finishes around at five. In Netherlands, it's, it's very relaxed. Uh, people don't overwork. Uh, they have very healthy work-life balance. Lifestyle. Yeah. yeah, like after like after five people start uh, wrapping up, and after six, almost no one is working. Wow! <laughs> what a nice place. Yeah. To be. <laughs> yeah. And the, I'll ask you. I'll ask you the the following question: Is regarding your business, Ashley? Mm -hmm. You just mentioned about the phone cases for iPhones, for Samsung. You just started from the early stage and it was sort of successful for per day. Uh, the sales number were like a thousand US dollars. Yes. And depending on that, if we come back to our main topic, how to be success successful at university and beyond, mm -hmm. we would like to ask you what skills should a business person or any person in general who is going to set up his business business should know about the IT? About IT? Well, in general, yeah. I think uh, mm, you, you, you should be, you know, you, you should have, uh, like these days, um, I think to be successful, uh, you should be, you should have digital genes uh, in your DNA by default <laughs> to be successful. <laughs> Let's put it this way. Um, yeah, like uh, you, you should learn all the, you, you, should, you, should, you should have very direct uh, relationships with all the, with the with technologists and modern uh, technologists, you know, uh, try, like for, for instance, um, you know, uh, try to, let's say, uh, um, use as much digital uh, tools as possible, you know, do everything online, you know, like uh, understand how marketing works, you know, uh, how, how social media works, like uh, understand the value of uh, online uh, uh, presence, uh, learn how to build a website without software developers. There's a lot of tools how to do it uh, without knowing any programming skills. Programming languages, so, right. Mm -hmm. Sorry? And without knowing any programming language, absolutely, languages. absolutely, oh, yeah. Wow. The technologies are, are, are so advanced these days that you don't need to know uh, any programming skills to build a website. Go ahead and build uh, your own website, you know, and uh, uh, try, I don't know, find some theme for it. There is a lot of tools for it. And uh, don't be like, try to, of course, like most of them are kind of freemium type of uh, model, like you, know, you, you can do a free trial, whatever, or uh, a couple of dollars a month. Um, um, uh, but if we talk about uh, skills and like you know starting business etc I think curiosity is something that's very important uh, mm -hmm. curiosity and um, you know asking questions uh, and like uh, the, 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 it's actually a very simple question why you know why it works this way how do you do this you know and just when you get one answer, you can actually dig into it even more, you know. Mm. Um, and by, you know, the, the, the deeper you go, the more insights you get uh, and the more understanding you will uh, find. So be curious and um, don't, don't, don't be afraid of uh, asking afraid of challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, challenge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the challenge status quo, like, you know, don't uh, take no as an answer, you know, um, just try digging. And um, uh, um, actually, like a, lo a lot of uh, what you think problems uh, that are around you is actually an opportunity to progress. 
and try to use uh, word challenge instead of problem. Uh, and that is uh, your opportunity to, to, to progress in something. Um, but as an, as an inspiration for like finding ideas is to just look around. And there is a lot of you know, challenges around us in, in <laughs> daily life. And if you That's try true. to fix it, try to provide solution, uh, that could be a good start, you know? Uh, that's how um, actually we, we started this phone uh, case things. Uh, um, I, I was trying to impress my girlfriend uh, back in times. And, you know, um, I printed the phone case for her that I ordered from UK. Uh, for your girlfriend, her. you mean? Yes, back then she was my girlfriend. Now she's my wife. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, nice. And we, we just wanted to replicate the idea. Like, hey, why don't we try it here? and um but adapt with you know local flavor uh yeah and actually fast forward uh, after we finished uh, with this project of phone cases which we've actually put on hold because of uh, all the complexities um um we started flower business and that also started with you know my my girlfriend <laughs> i wanted to buy her a big bouquet of flowers for a small price and in Almaty, I knew that there is some kind of uh, black market of flowers that you can <laughs> buy, you know, half price of, you know, of what you find on the street, uh, just in normal regular wow. stores. Uh, like near uh, what we call Green Bazaar, there is um, the, um, some, 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 some market that opens 5 a.m., 5 in the morning. And they like open the gates and uh, cars start coming in. And there is the... Um, suppliers uh, of uh, flowers on like super super cheap price and a lot of uh, store owners uh, from the city they come there and they buy uh, uh, for lower price and then they sell it uh, during the day for you know like two times whatever um i went there just you know to buy one bouquet and um i, I bought it um, i gave it as a, a present, a present. Mm -hmm. and then i thought like yeah probably a lot of other guys wants to buy a big bouquet for lower than store prices um, you know and then um, we yeah kind of bootstrapped uh, and tried to uh, you know try out this idea um, we thought like we said okay let's keep it very simple i'm not a flower expert <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I don't have any expertise in this domain but i know for sure that uh, there are people who wants to buy flowers in cheaper price and of course, uh, in Kazakhstan, uh, people like to impress uh, with the flowers. So like big bouquet is a thing. Um, and we, we thought we would have three types of bouquets, um, 101 rows, uh, 75 rows and 51 rows, you know, three. So like we would sell only three types of this and, and that's it. Um, so we kind of limited the offering um, and that actually was quite successful. and um that's still like uh, i i started with my friend again the one that uh, we were doing the phone cases he still runs this business it's called cp kz such a good friend yes uh we're still uh, in touch with him um but yeah like it, it was quite successful uh i i was working maybe like three four hours a day um and monthly i was making um roughly like two and a half three thousand dollars net from the flowers uh, you mean yes by reselling flowers oh. so like you would order flowers uh, on on whatsapp i would call the flower supplier like hey can you prepare a bouquet for me like i will come in an hour and then you know i go actually i didn't have even a car or like i took a taxi on the street and then i went there took the bouquet and then delivered it to someone i pay half price there and i resell it two times and uh, uh, yeah, that was the whole nice. like very simple uh, business model, but it worked. Uh, uh, I, I've been doing this for like six months or something uh, and grew to, to the moment that, uh, you know, like daily we were sometimes selling like 400, 500 roses. Um, um, daily. And, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like, uh, and I was working like just a couple of hours a day and the rest of the day I was just hanging out you know uh, with my girlfriend or we would go to cinema or i just do nothing or um 
uh, yeah, and yeah, as I said, like I was making like net uh, three thousand uh, dollars, uh, and then um, yeah, I was uh, at the moment of my life um, that um, uh, I was offered to work in Silicon Valley in US. So mm. that was quite a big thing because you know you like you have a business that's working. You don't put a lot of efforts in it. That's actually bringing you a lot of money for local, uh, you know, market. It was 2014. Um, uh, but you, on the other hand, I have this offer to work in California in Silicon Valley, and I'm I have a computer science background. How can you reject this? You know, so it was a quite difficult <laughs> thing. <laughs> um, it was very very difficult, and um, uh, but I I I. Well, the, the the advice that I used actually is is from uh, Fuad Bey. Uh, um, I, I'm not sure if you know him, but is is our big teacher. We we call him our big papa. The mentor, right? The mentor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Fuad Bey. I'm I'm grateful for his advice that he gave me. Not for that specific situation, but a couple of years prior to that. But I applied it. And it was it was like this. So you you try it out. Uh, you can try it. If you like it, you stay with it. If you don't like it, you can just come back uh, and continue doing what you did in the past. Wow. Simple as it is. Uh, yeah. And and really, like I can fly to US, uh, try working there. If I don't like it, you know, there's always a, a way uh, back home, and I just come back to Kazakhstan and can, like continue doing my things. Uh, nice. that I, I was doing before um and if if but if things if things go go well i just continue doing it you know um so yeah actually like it took me i think a month to make this decision to sign an offer and accept it uh but yeah i decided uh um, yeah to do this and it wasn't easy also because you know uh, my girlfriend was there. It meant that I need to fly 10,000 kilometers away, and then we have distant relationships, all the drama, etc. That that's difficult always. Uh, you sealed the deal by by just marrying her, I think. We just sorry. Made it. <laughs> you sealed the deal by just marrying her. <laughs> you solved exactly. the problem. Yeah, that comes uh, that comes a bit later, uh, but that was yeah, of course, always uh, uh, in my mind. Uh, yeah, so I decided to go there to US, and that was a big challenge. Um, I thought I knew uh, English uh, very well, but turned out I knew nothing about uh, practical English, that you know, spoken I... English that you know you use like in you know chit chat. Just you know, like I, I remember on my first working day, we went for lunch with colleagues, uh, mostly American folks, and they asked me like, "Hey, wh what kind of food do you guys have?" And I struggled to describe what Besparmak is. Um, or... <laughs> <laughs> I just say it's horse meat. <laughs> yeah, just, just eat but, it. You know, it's, it's, it's more, yeah, of course, yeah. I said horse meat. They're like, what? It's illegal what in the US. go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, and I had this barrier of uh, language barrier, like to unleash it, uh, you know, and uh, um, skills, soft skills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, uh, the way I fixed it actually is is very funny. I I would call uh, customer service of you know some credit cards, um, and just talk to them about random things and try to express my thought. Uh, and it's for free. You, you talk to someone, you practice your speaking, uh, but also listening. They tell you something back, and you try to understand them. Um, and I, I would spend like 15, 20 minutes talking to some customers, support uh, people that. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> but this Mr. Adam, I think we have a question in the audience. If you don't mind, uh, I'll just give you the microphone yeah, and they will ask you a personal question. Do you have a question? Yep. Hello, good afternoon. Hi. Uh, my name is Asarbek. I'm an uh, IT specialist here in BMU. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really interesting for me because uh, we are in this uh, same sphere, and <clears throat> it's uh, interesting that uh, how did you uh, found your first job? How did you uh, get offer? 
and uh, maybe did you use uh, LinkedIn or something else? And is there any ways to learn this uh, sphere? And can you share your uh, experience for, from this? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, thanks for the question. I think I, I didn't use LinkedIn on my university times. It wasn't a thing uh, back then. Today, you guys are lucky to have it. Uh, well, I'm as well. I uh, have quite wide uh, network there. I uh, still kind of leverage it. But um, yeah, today, for sure, LinkedIn is your uh, go-to place to find something else. Uh, but not just that. Like I think uh, information in general is very, very accessible these days, right? And it's becoming you know, like more and more accessible, any kind of information. Um, and yeah, you just Google it, you know? uh and you 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 find uh what whatever you need uh the way i found it uh was uh through actually my my networking that i knew some um, like the, 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 there is a, uh, my um let's say uh brother like uh, unspoken brother uh, Nurjan Bakibayev, uh, also from uh, KBTU. Uh, he is a couple of years older than me. He was one of the, uh, let's say, um, first, let's say, big stars uh, in, in our university. And I was, yeah, he was my, like my mentor, let's say. Um, uh, and we would work on certain projects in university, just, you know, small projects here and there. But then uh, through his network, actually, he he offered, he said like, oh, there is an opportunity to, you know, have a job offer at this company. Then you would work, you know, on uh, working a, a, a university website. It was very nice, you know. Uh, of course, I accepted it. And not only me, like a couple of other students as well, we worked together. So, yeah, it was just through someone I knew. Um, simple as that. But uh, yeah. in general, I would say, try to utilize, try to use all your channels as much as possible. Um, and don't be afraid of exploring and trying things out. Uh, by trying, by like actually trying those things, you will understand if you like that thing or, you, or, or, or that you don't like. You know, as a uh, software developer, for example, you don't know like either to go as a mobile developer for iOS or to go as a front-end developer, you know, uh, and you just try both work for a little bit, a couple of months, a year, maybe, I don't know. And then you see if you like it or not. And then, um, or, or just to take some courses online, like everything is again, like it, it comes to the information ac accessibility. It's super accessible. Like these days, everything like, uh, on YouTube, you can find a lot of free how to do this or how to do that, you know. Um, yeah. So just be curious, be curious, explore, go out, you know, just don't, don't, um, uh, don't uh, stay in one place. Uh, yeah. Try things out, just, you know, naturally be, you know, in, in discovery mode, let's say. Yeah. Um, then you discover something, yeah. Yeah, when you find that that thing that you like, you will feel it and you will know that, okay, this it's this thing that, uh, you know, uh, I need to dig into really and become a master. You, you will know that moment for sure because, you know, you will feel it, I think. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, uh, one more question. Uh, the hardest part of the uh, getting job is uh, interview, you know that? And can you share your experience uh, about how, your, how was your uh, first interview uh, for Booking.com and something else? Well, with Booking.com interview, uh, it was actually, <clears throat> <clears throat> with Booking itself, it was easy, but the path that uh, led to that easy interview was very hard. Um, <laughs> um, and the reason for that is because I had to do a hundred interviews prior to this. Um, and uh, this is actually, um, so like after, after, after US, after United States, uh, there was a moment that I had to go back to uh, Kazakhstan 
get uh, <coughs> married with my girlfriend. Uh, she became my wife. Uh, mm -hmm. But I actually didn't have uh, my contract uh, continued in US. So I had to find another job. Being in Kazakhstan, uh, I was trying to find some job uh, abroad, mainly in US. But um, a lot of companies, they were re rejecting me by many reasons. Um, and to, to name a few reasons is you don't have working visa and to get a working visa, you need to go through a very heavy process. It's called, visa is called right. H1B. Uh, there, there is a lottery and you, it's not easy to get it. Second, uh, I failed some of the interviews. Like I didn't solve some problem, you know, like third is um, uh, there, it wasn't a right fit uh, either for me or for them, you know, like there's multiple reasons. Um, so, and in, in, in total, I did really like over a hundred interviews with, with different, different companies, mainly, you know, I was doing them at night because of the time zone difference. I was in Kazakhstan and, uh, mm -hmm. there in the U S it's like 12, 13 hours different difference. And I did them, you know, midnight, 1 AM, 2 AM, you know, like very late. Um, and yeah, like I kept, uh, pushing, I continued, uh, pushing and, uh, eventually, I got an offer from U.S. startup, uh, mm -hmm. and I was confident. Okay, now I have a job. Uh, um, and once, well, actually, when when I already had an offer from that um, American startup from San Francisco, Booking.com also uh, said, like, let's do interview. Uh, and um, that company uh, in U.S. The, uh, you know, it didn't work out because of Visa again, the lottery thing. Uh, mm -hmm. and since I walked, like been through this journey of a lot of rejections, a lot of interviews, I kind of built my strength and stamina with like interviewing and <laughs> with booking, it was, it was very easy because, I, um, yeah, like you just like, you talk to recruiters as, you know, is as, as like, like number like 20 or 30 time, you, you yeah. already know how to talk to them. You already know kind of the approach, how to take, uh, like approaches to take to so solve certain problems, you know? Um, and yeah, you just train, you, you spend a lot of uh, time in uh, training uh, preparing yourself. I think more than half of, uh, successful interview lies in preparing for the actual interview itself. Yeah. Of so course, yes. if you, if you're planning to apply to some, you know, companies, spend a lot of time preparing for the interview uh, uh that will hire your chances uh some people don't do this and they just go and you know they're confident that they have the, all the skills and uh some of them they do uh, uh succeed in edit you know but uh it doesn't happen to everyone uh and sometimes you're just lucky or sometimes you're just really smart but uh, uh unfortunately not uh it doesn't happen to everyone. Uh, so be prepared for interviews, spend a lot of time preparing, uh, Google a lot of information about the company that you're applying for, uh, read the latest news, uh, latest articles, what's happening, like what's their business, how they make money. Um, that Alibek, everything I think there, there is a course in Coursera on how to prepare for the yeah. interview, right? For Google interviews. Most probably, yeah. There's a lot yeah, of courses, I... you know, Again, this comes down to YouTube tutorials. Accessibility. Yeah, uh, it's it's super available. Um, but yeah, my takeaway from this is just preparation and hard preparation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much. I think we're taking so much of your time, precious time. And the last question that I wanted to ask from you, Mr. Albeck, we aspire to educate and teach the best leaders and students at our university. And we would like to see some of our best students and best uh, like applicants as a part of your team in the future, hopefully, let's just say. And what does it take them what does it take them to be in your team? What kind of skills? I, just ping me on Facebook and I will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is a mechanism that's called uh, a referring, a referral. Um, yeah, we have a lot of like uh, plenty of open positions. 
I oh, you do in the chat jobs.booking.com. Um, we hire constantly. We need bright minds, and I'm sure there are some amongst this audience, and not only. Um, and yeah, just find uh, the position that you like on this website and uh, ping me on Facebook. Uh, give me your resume and I, I will try to make a referral uh, and a recommendation uh, for you. Thank you. Thank you. That's so good. Uh, thank you so much. I didn't, we didn't expect that. And if some of our students ask you to be, uh, to ask you to be their mentor, how would you take this one? <laughs> Cause you said well, like search for it, uh, reach them I, out. As, talk as, more, I, like, as I said, I try to reply to everyone. Uh, it might not be, it will probably be not real time, uh, but I try to answer questions um, to, 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 to everyone. and uh, As much as yeah, possible. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, reach out and uh, I'll try to help uh, with uh, whatever I can. Thank you so much. Albeck, the question, uh, very probably simple for you, but mm -hmm. could be useful for our students is that we are not IT university and we don't we do not teach students to it skills yes and i keep telling in my class that uh, everybody should start learning programming now mm -hmm. would you would you validate this argument as well uh, because learning programming is programming is becoming one of the fundamental skills like counting numbers mm -hmm. like reading really... uh, it would at, at least at least not complex mm -hmm. as complex as java maybe as python Python, Python, JavaScript, uh, I think, are good uh, in introduction uh, for sure. Um, or, for example, if you if you're gonna work with data a lot, right? Like uh, getting some insights out of the data, right? Like for instance, you know, some some uh, like th there was collected a lot of data, and you try to understand this data. You you, you by applying some coding skills. You can get a lot of insights from it by by applying these uh, skills. You know, you know, by uh, uh, yeah, using those uh, programming skills. Um, and um, yeah, I, I I agree with you. Um, that will definitely help you. Um, even if you like, there is a course I think is a very famous one. It's called CS50. Um, you, you can look it up online. Um, I, I don't remember, it, it, it's either from Harvard or from some other top US university, but it's publicly available. Um, like all the, you know, uh, program, like what they teach there, uh, have a look at it. I, I highly recommend uh, for, you know, intro level into computer science. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, the, the, the better you understand uh, how, you know, digital world works on the inside, uh, it, it, it will allow you to leverage that in, in some, you know, situation when you actually apply it in, in your professional uh, career. How's your brother Janibek doing? Is, where, where's he now? Yeah, he's in US. Uh, he's in Facebook. He works at the okay. um, machine learning infra uh, team. Uh, at, that at Facebook. At Facebook, wow. yes. In, in will, he, will he agree for the same session? Uh, <laughs> well, he is a busy man as well, a family man. Uh, you should talk to him. Uh, but, okay. Uh, he he he's not as a public person personality as myself. I, I think. Uh, <laughs> I um, yeah, but you, you you yeah you can always try, of course. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any final no, questions we have? Do you have questions? Do you guys have questions? Um, there are no more. No? Yeah, Golip. Uh, this name, is Golip. My name is Golip. Uh, our vice hey. director. Yeah, one of so actually I worked at QBT with Timur. That's uh, but we studied yeah. at Arizona together a long time ago. <laughs> well, yeah, thank you. You know, uh, thank you for for the uh, I think useful presentation. It's actually as Timur mentioned, we are not IT university, but we are. Uh, starting to integrate some of the IT, you know, minor programs uh, mm -hmm. uh, soon, because mm -hmm. we know as IT is uh, very important uh, for for you know anyone if they want to succeed, they have to at least understand the concepts, how it works, um, so, and and some you know get some insight into this. Yeah, yeah thank you. What's on the chat? <laughs> right. yeah. And wish you all the best.
Thanks a lot. Yeah, I hope uh, it wasn't too technical, uh, but uh, useful. At least uh, one word, if you take it as uh, useful, I will. Uh, I consider this a success. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you so much, and uh, good luck. Thank you, thank you Alibek. Best you. of luck to you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Keep in touch. Bye.